everyone, welcome to Liquid Brain. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform WGDNA in R. So there's a tutorial provided by the creator that shows us very detailed information for every step. However, this is quite lengthy and also quite hard for the beginner to understand. And also the scripts in the tutorial are quite old. Um, the last update was in 2011, so it's quite hard to follow. So the other day, I have found a nice journal paper that is from Nature Plunge. The authors are very kind. They have deposited the, the R script in the data availability section. So they have put it into the GitHub um, here. And the R script is all about WGC in it. They make it very neat. They divide them into several sections. So we can just follow accordingly. And what's more, they also provided us the gene count table, sample information, and trick file, which is the microbial texture file. So this paper mainly want to find the plant flavor and production that correlate with the microbiome in a way to improve maize production under nitrogen deprivation. So in my video, I will adapt to the R script and also add some of the other elements that provided from the original tutorial. Generally, we just need three steps. The first is that we need to arrange and input the data needed. The secondly is to construct the network and also assign the modules. And the third one is to relate the module to external tweaks. So the external tweak here um, is, is divided into two types. First is the district data, which is like female or male. The other one is the um, continuous data, which is like other expression data. For example, in the paper is the microbial profiling data. So let's run the script. Okay, so we need all the library, WGCNA, and the DC2 will be used to generate the FPKM value for the gene count data. So I look here the gene count data and also the sample information. So let's have a look for the gene count data. Um, they have um, 181 columns. So here the columns are all the sample ID and the row here are the genes. The last column here is the gene length for each of the genes. For the sample metadata, they have several phenotype information for the samples, a total of 180 samples here. So the first thing is to get the FPKM value. This is the expression data that we're going to use in the following step. Let's take a look here. We have made the sample in the row and the genes are in the column and try to match to see whether the sample metadata having the same sample ID as the um, data expressed. Okay, so they are quite similar. For convenience, I will also subset the data in the first 5,000 genes. For the region, the first thing we need to do is to check whether there is any outlier in the sample. That's why they perform the sample tree to check. Okay, so I have set them into my working directory file and this is the sample tree. All this 180 and they distributed quite nice here, so we don't need to remove any data here. And next, we could proceed to the network construction and the module detection. So the first thing we need to do is to switch the threshold parameter. This is the parameter to let the function to know how is the distribution of your expression data, how they can categorize the genes into same module based on your preset parameter. So we set a range of the power 1 to 20 and let's see what happened to them. Okay, so it would take a while even though it's just 5,000 genes. So we can imagine how long it would be for the full data that may be in 10 times more. Okay, so now we have the result and we can try to plot the skill independence and also the mean connectivity plot. And we should be able to see a very nice exponential curve. So this is to help us to decide what is the suitable power to use in the south stream. And as we can see here, I think 4 is a good number here. Okay, so they also estimate that it should be 4. Okay, 
So now we come to the network construction. Um, this is the would run to a few algorithms which will help us to assign the module based on the dissimilarity of the gene. So here we have two options to do. The first is automatic one step option. This means that we will just try to assign whatever thing that we need in the function here. Uh, we got the power and minimum module size for each of the module, which means that at least 30 genes should be present in one module. And also uh, we have to decide here the cut height, which means the module that lower than 0 0.25 will just merge together into the stem module. And also we would tell them what is the tom type. Uh, whether you want side or unsigned. In general, unsigned means that we would treat the nodes with positive and negative correlation in a way that they are equal. So they both also express that they are having correlation. But side means that we will ignore the nodes with negative correlation. We only focus on those positive correlation. So it depends on what you need. Um, it depends on your objective to decide which path you prefer. Okay, so the automatic here is will kind of save time for you, but it's at the same time you can't really quite sure what are the threshold that you need. However, the advantage to run this is um, if let's say you have a very small computing power and your data is quite large, this block wise module is kind of able to divide your data into several blocks and then enable you to run it in the laptop. Okay, so um, now I try to plot the dendrogram to see how is this look like. Okay, so this is the dendrogram and this is the module that assigned here. And now we can proceed to the second step. So the second here is giving us more flexibility to adjust what are the power and the other threshold that needed to construct the network. So in this option, it's um, they also have two types of the function for us. The first one is that we need to run the ejection C um, in a way to get the ejection C metric and look in the function term similarity to calculate the topological overlap metric and to get the similarity term here. So this is actually similar also as the option B, uh, but option B here is kind of like um, skip the ejection C step and tell the system that uh, the file that we load here is the expression file. So inside here, they will also count the ejection C for us and return the term uh, result. This is not much different for the option 2A and 2B. It's just like whether you want to use this function or this function. And this is how the tom file will look like. It will be in 5000 genes versus 5000 genes and to form the metric of the dissimilarity value. So we can try to plot the genes here and see how it should look like. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so it will be something like this. And if we can try to compare them with the with the dendrogram that got constructed using the block wide module, it's something like this. Okay, so this is the dendrogram and the module as type as for the step by step function, and this is the one step function that uh, use the block wise module function. So we can see that I'm not much different for both of them. And this has also demonstrated that in the tutorial by the author, um, there's not much different. So it means that you can freely choose whether you want to use the block wise way or you want to use the step by step way. Okay, so now um, for the step by step, we need to do the following step, which is to merge the module. And this has been done automatically using the blockwise module function. So now we try to get the things here and we can try to plot the trees. Okay, so we can see that this is all the modules that generated by the step by step method. Some of the modules we can try to merge them. If let's say this is the, I want to merge something like this, or maybe much more okay so i will try to let's say i want to put the line here is four okay and it will be having something like this so this means that these two will merge together and these two will merge together so this look quite 
okay for my data so I will still I will just proceed and that means is you can flexibly adjust the threshold of the uh, merge cut height okay so now I merge them together and then I can plot it again yeah so this is how it look like after it's merged them together um, they're not much different also, but uh, they, some of them have been merged into the same module color. Okay, so this is how we can flexibly do it using the step-by-step -step method. Next, uh, we can try to export the network to external software, which is like um, to be used in the cytoscape. We can try to export the old modules and also the new module. So it depends whether what you prefer. Okay, so you will get it from the output for Tatterscape and I have already exported all the network that has to play into the edge and the node. Um, very nicely done using the function. At the moment, we can complete the network construction and the module assignment. Um, and now you can try to do whatever things um, trying to correlate with the external trait.